Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Quick video. Let me start this by saying I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I have financial experience whatsoever. Do not invest in anything solely based off my opinions or anything that I say in this video until you've done your own due diligence and your own research first. Never throw in more money than you're willing to lose, and also make sure you have a firm understanding of crypto before throwing in any kind of money. With that being said, I just want to give you guys some quick updates, um, and then go. I wanted to try something different in this video. First thing, breaking from Bitcoin Magazine, Sam Bankman Freed is facing eight charges which could total up to 165 years in prison, unsealed indictment shows. This ball is trickling. FTX is very huge. I know a lot of people worried about, hey, is he going get to get out of jail? Is he going to go to jail, etc. Um, they had some kind of conference yesterday and they, I guess he uh, exited in handcuffs. So not a good look, but we shall see how this plays out. <clears throat> Um, let me see here. Next thing from Blockworks, the FBI, SEC, and CFTC have rallied with the U.S. Attorney's Office to address SBI or SBS indictment. Um, just a basic uh, tweet. I'll skip that for now. Next thing, Gold Telegraph, Binance customer withdrawals exceed $3 billion in 24 hours. Things are getting hot now. As I've told you guys before, you need to take the necessary time to invest in something to protect yourself, okay? Security is of the utmost importance. If you leave your stuff on an exchange, you do not have that security. You, not your keys, not your crypto. I'm sure you've probably heard that saying probably 400 times at this point, and I'm probably not the only one telling you this. Protect yourself, people, okay? These digital assets are literally money, okay? And obviously, you know, in the future, a lot of these will probably be worth substantially more and will increase in value. Just as a thought, if you want to risk it for the biscuit and leave it on the exchange, I mean, at the end of the day, if a coin, uh, a, yeah, if an exchange goes insolvent, you have nobody to blame but yourself if you're leaving your stuff there. Just a thought. Next thing, um, I also posted the video. Apparently, I found uh, from Simon Dixon that has uh, Mr. SPF coming out in handcuffs. So if you guys want to look at it, that that's up to you. Next thing, shout out to Avery Colvin from my XRP group. Uh, you're the man for noticing this, but uh, manager product marketing, Crypto Dash One. Basically, we're seeing a lot of different uh, advertisements for a lot of crypto related uh, positions at different companies. Um, and it is increasing, at least from what I've seen myself. Uh, you could probably just go and Google and type in, you know, crypto related jobs, etc. I'm sure you'll probably find something. But um, this is basically, let me see here, full time, mid senior level. IT specialist, um, and then it has like a little description and everything. I'm not going to read through all that, but it's also posted on my page so that, that way you guys can see it. Um, just then, according to Watcher Guru, the SEC charges eight social media influencers in a $100 million stock manipulation scheme promoted on Discord and Twitter. Wow. Hope nobody got caught up with that. Um, next thing, uh, from whalechart.org, Sam Bankman-Fried will spend time at the Fox Hill Correctional Facility, a notoriously overcrowded and unsanitary institution. This should get interesting. 24 hours ago, he was in a $40 million Bahamas penthouse. My, have, have times changed? Um, next thing, I'm not even going to go on that. That's not going to waste my time. So I actually recently posted uh, that I wanted to uh, get your opinions in regards to future videos that you guys wanted me to discuss. Um, if there were like certain topics or anything that you wanted me to bring to the table, give you my rendition or my interpretation of it. Um, so I have a couple people that actually responded with some questions. Um, first question, uh, shout out to Crypto1075. If XRP will be worth so much money and all these elites are planning and know that it will take over the financial system, then why wouldn't they buy up all of the XRP? Wouldn't that make them even more elite and keep the average person from getting rich? Would like your take on this. Thanks. So, I'm a regular Joe Schmo, Joe Schmo so we're just going to start with that. <laughs> um, this is just my uh, interpretation of what I think might be coming down the pipeline. So I do feel like there was an opportunity for any retail that was going to get in. Obviously, we were pretty much the test dummies before uh, institutional use comes in. So with that being said, you know, if you were able to buy some XRP early on, I think there would probably be a cutoff point where we won't have access to purchase it. Um, like I said, this is just my opinion in regards to this. And I know that in 2019, Ripple actually stopped programmatic sales to exchanges. So the XRP that is on exchanges currently is the XRP that they're going to have, okay? Whenever it runs out, it's gone at the end of the day. And if there's no more XRP on exchanges and it's pretty much bottlenecked and been delisted from a lot of different exchanges, then that means that a lot of people won't have access to this. Um, obviously, if you know you don't look into potential exchanges that do have it listed, then you know, you're pretty much out of luck. But there are some exchanges that do hold it. Um, I do think at some point uh, we will obviously know what will happen with this escrow. Um, I do think some of this is probably pre-allocated to different governments and obviously disseminated down to different banks, etc. cetera. Um, you know, I don't know if it's based on like their size, how much volume they have in regards to that aspect that comes through the actual bank. But, you know, this is just my thoughts on this. 
So, you know, obviously anybody that wants to buy can right now, but I do think that there will be a point in time when that won't happen. Um, if they wanted to buy some, cool, you know, but once again, when it comes to this escrow, this is going to be important. This is going to be key. Like I said, and I think it's probably probably some kind of contracts or something. Um, obviously, this is a worldwide and global thing that is going on right now, okay? This is a coordinated effort. This is not just the United States. This is not just, you know, Canada, Australia. This is a worldwide thing. You know, they've discussed this at, you know, meetings at Lyft. <laughs> so I do feel that, you know, at a certain point, some of that is already pre-allocated to certain governments and to certain banking institutions so that that way, you know, hey, you can use this amount based on how much transactions you do and this bank B can also do the same thing, et cetera, et cetera. That's just my thoughts on that. Um, like I said, so, you know, if you're in, you know, ultimately you, you had the opportunity to jump on board, you know, it hasn't run out yet at the end of the day, which is good. I mean, I guess however you want to look at it, but I do think that that day is going to come when we won't be able to access it. Just my thoughts. Hopefully that addressed your question. Um, next question I have... Can you do a video on, oh, I'm sorry, shout out to Raleel. Can you do a video on if Ripple loses and moves out of the U.S., what is a sound outcome with the fact that they are so big in other parts of the world like Japan? We still have a ticket. At the end of the day, this SEC lawsuit is a waste of time. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that lightly, but, you know, most of Ripple's business is outside the United States. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was 95% plus is outside the United States. So whether this, you know, lawsuit goes south or doesn't go south, it doesn't matter because most of their business is outside of the USA and their jurisdiction, okay? So, you know, they're doing business in Japan, Singapore, India, you know, they have all the major banks on board with it. Whether the United States wants to jump on board or not, it doesn't matter. They're still making their money at the end of the day. And people are utilizing the technology. If the United States wants to sit on the sidelines and twiddle their thumbs, they can do that. All power to them. Now, would that be smart on their behalf? I mean, with everything going on with, you know, everyone jumping on with bricks and everyone leaving SWIFT and obviously the dollar is at risk, de-dollarization. I don't know. Let's see how the United States plays this. You know, that's ultimately up to them how they want to play this, you know. And I, I feel like there's going to come a time when they're going to have to make a decision, you know, where everybody else is going to be ready to go. Like, sign, seal, deliver. Hey, we're starting this thing, so-and-so date, so-and-so time. You know, obviously, we are not. We don't care about time frames. We're probably not going to know ahead of time. They're not going to tell us. You're probably just going to wake up and be, like, mind-blown when you see the price. That's just my thoughts on that. Like I said, I'm just a regular Joe Schmo, but it's not really a loss. It's going to be a loss for the USA because we won't be as competi uh, competitive in regards to other nations, but I think this is a global effort, too, so I don't know if maybe this is a stalling tactic or what it is, but... Like I said, I mean, I still think it's the key. 95%, like I said, outside the United States. I mean, that says enough for me. <laughs> I'm not going to say this. I won't say that. Um, so, like, the United States, they have a choice. <laughs> Sorry if I'm ranting a little bit, but they have a choice. You know, are they going to let this technology go around them? Or are they going to actually start utilizing it in this lawsuit that's been kabuki theater, in the words of uh, Mel Carmine? Ultimately, the ball's in their court. They get to make a decision. I hope they make the right decision. And we shall all see together how it plays out. You know, I know people are shooting for this December 15th. I'm not really, you know, focused on dates at this point. It is what it is. It'll happen when it happens. You know, just keep living your life. You know, if you're still investing and it's still, you know, affordable, I mean, I'm dollar cost averaging. That's just my opinion. So hopefully that addresses your question. Like I said, I don't think it, the United States really matters in regards to this. I mean, <laughs> just being honest. Um, next thing, uh, shout out to Hank Bravo 81 Hey man, be good to have a video on your thoughts about withdrawing any amount of XRP when the price spikes. I know a lot of people will sell all and that's completely the choice, but my point is we see where exchanges are going short term. Not a lot of people are talking about withdrawing XRP to fiat from these exchanges. Liquidity is killing them and it's probably not organic at all. We know that. A lot of folks are going to put XRP on their chosen exchange to withdraw the fiat quickly. And it's a very real possibility that these transactions are going to get lost slash stuck. I'm well aware of all exit, non-exit strategies, staking, etc. It's just a video that could it's just a video that could make people think twice about withdrawing during post-SEC clarity, you know? I mean, who the heck would feel comfortable putting their XRP on exchange at the critical moment in a bull run to sell? Pressing that confirm button and just waiting for it to process. Hodling seems like the only safe bet at this point. So, what I can say, like I said, I'm a regular Joe Schmo. I don't know everybody's um, goals or what they're trying to obtain. You know, some people, hey, they just want to make a quick flip. Some people, they want generational wealth. Some people, they want to be, a pay up, uh, be able to pay off debt. Some people want to be able to retire. That's ultimately up to you. You know, me personally, I'm probably not selling nine times out of ten because I think this is going to be pretty valuable in the future. But like I said, that's just my thoughts and based on the research that I have come across myself. You know, I can't speak for anybody else. I can't really, you know, say, hey, they should not do this or they, sh they should do this. At the end of the day, everything is a risk. And exchanges, we know, 
There's some exchanges, I'm not going to name any names, that like to go down whenever bull runs do happen, which is possible. It really is. But I think at that point, once we do have regulatory clarity, that you won't have to go to the exchanges. You will probably be able to go to your banking institution down the street. You know, they have so-and-so amount. You know, they offer maybe staking or percentage of interest for using your digital assets. And then if you want to cash out, you go there. But that's just my opinion. Like I said, I, you know, I could be just blowing smoke. This is just what I feel is coming. You know, at the end of the day, when regulatory clarity comes, you know, these banks and financial institutions, I feel like will be able to cash you out if you wanted to, especially if you wanted to cash out larger sums. Like I said, that's only for people that are trying to cash out. If you're not and you're trying to do like staking or earn interest or something like that, then that's a totally different story. You know, it, that's a totally different video too. But, you know, ultimately it's up to you however you want to do it, you know, but it is a risk. I'm not going to lie. Throwing your stuff on exchanges is always going to be a risk. There's exchanges going insolvent. We see it all the time. FTX is a perfect example. That is the poster child right now. So, you know, if you want to take that risk and, hey, you know, the SEC provides clarity, XRP, you know, goes up to a certain price and you want to sell – all power to you. I'm not here to stop anybody from doing that. You can make that own decision for yourself. That's your hard-earned money. But, you know, it's all based on what your goals are and where do you see this going in the long term. And long term for me, I see institutions and banks and, you know, they're holding these assets. And they will allow you to cash out at the facility if you wanted to. And they might even offer you, if you're doing staking, a higher percentage versus another bank. That's just my thoughts, like I said. So, Hopefully that addresses your question. Uh, if not, definitely just comment again. Let me know. <laughs> uh, so that's all I have for y'all to uh, today. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. If there's any other topics you guys want me to discuss, definitely don't hesitate to comment. Uh, put them in the description. I'll read them. I try to respond back to every single comment. Um, thanks so much. ISO Gold Out. I'll catch you on another video.